Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something that I think a lot of people are really not that familiar with and I think that it's something important to cover and that is the reality of buying sheep and when to buy sheep, what to look for and how to really understand exactly what you're getting vice what you're being told you're getting. So stick around. This is going to be a very informative video if you are looking to get into the sheep industry or struggling in your first couple of years to get started. Let's talk first things first. Number one is, is what exactly are you looking for when you are looking to buy sheep? Let's say you're starting off and you say, hey, I want to get into some Katahdin sheep or maybe some Dorper. You need to really take a look around and see what you are getting uh, for the area that you're in. Um, for me, you know, I'm hair sheep. I have Katahdin. I had had goats for years and years. I wanted to get something that was a little bit less maintenance. Um, the Katahdin have proven that. They have their own issues, don't get me wrong. But maintenance wise, long term, they were the best for me. So the main thing you've got to look at, number one, is when you go and you're looking to buy, let's say whether you're going to a stockyard or you're going to see someone individually, is you need to get an understanding of just exactly what sheep they have on that property. And if they have some Dorper and they have some Katahdin or they have this or they have that, and it's not all one specific uh, breed, you need to probably, in my opinion, take a step back and say, okay, if I want Katahdin and there are Dorper or there are some other brands there, am I 100% sure that I'm going to get uh, a full blood, not registered, but at least a full blood Katahdin? You know, if you're looking to get a mixed one, it really doesn't matter. But if you really are looking to start off a herd with a specific breed, you probably need to really, or you, not probably, you really need to take a look at that area that you're buying from and take a look and see what they have. Okay, now what do I mean by that, going and looking and seeing the specific breed, okay? I'm gonna give you an example of what happened to me a couple of years ago. I was looking for Katahdin sheep. I was fairly new in the market. I hadn't bought any. And I found someone who was selling Katahdin sheep. Uh, and this was an individual that had a farm, okay? When I got there and I started looking around, I saw what I thought was Katahdin sheep, and they were, okay? But what I did not know was that those sheep uh, had not been born and bred, or bred and born, on his place. And so I bought some sheep. I thought they were Katahdin, they were. I have them, I pay extra because they're bred, so they've got a baby uh, that's on its way. And when I got back here and I was starting my herd, when they had the babies, they were not Katahdin. I had a large amount of sheep that I was starting a Katahdin herd with that were essentially uh, bred at a stockyard or something or wherever, and I didn't get to start my herd off. So I had to turn around and all or the majority of the sheep that were born that I paid more money for in the beginning, I had to end up getting rid of because I didn't want a Dorper Katahdin mix and I didn't want this specific sheep mixed with my Katahdin. I wanted Katahdin sheep. So I had to step back and uh, sell a lot of what I planned on starting my herd off with and that put me back uh, a year. Probably the best advice that I can give for anybody out there looking for sheep right now that are working with a seller, uh, especially if it's an individual seller, one of the biggest things that I can tell you advice-wise to do is take a look at the ear tags, okay? So when you sign up with the USDA, every state uh, has a specific number that they're gonna give a breeder or let's say someone just reselling like myself. So, you know, I, I raise my sheep, I have the uh, core of my herd on the farm, and then if I want to sell the offspring, they have to be tagged. And what's great is a lot of auction places do not allow you to sell those animals if they don't have an ear tag. And that ear tag is specifically designed by the state to be able to track back when that sheep was born, where it was born, and all of that. And that's what you see, the red tags or the yellow or whatever that you see. But here's an important thing to think about when you're going to an individual's house, and this is what I ran into, uh, and you're looking at the sheep, okay? 
look and see how many tags are different colored, how many tags are from how many different states. Every tag on there will have an abbreviation for the state that it's from and where it was tagged. So you need to be able to look around at those sheep. And if you're seeing a red tag and a yellow tag and Missouri and Tennessee and, you know, Kentucky and all these different tags on all these different animals, you really don't have a traditional person selling livestock from their farm. Okay. What you basically have is someone who has gone out to a stockyard. They have bought 200 head of sheep. Uh, at a reduced price because they're buying all of them. They bring them back to their farm. They worm them. They might vaccinate them. Um, and then they are going to sell them at a smaller amount uh, per maybe one, you know, one sheep to someone, maybe like seven or eight to me. And then they are going to mark the price up. So you're buying in bulk as, you know, common sense. You're buying in bulk. You're getting a reduced price. You bring them back. You store them at your place. You feed them. You get them healthy. And then you sell them. Okay, so when you go, like if you come to my farm, you're not going to see anything other than one ear tag, okay? And that is the ear tag for me because I've got a core group and we are producing sheep and I can be able to tell you, hey, look, that's the ram. This is the mom. This is what you're going to get. Or, you know, hey, look, this is four or five sheep from this one ram and this is what my herd consists of and you can look and see all of that. If you're going and you're inexperienced and you're going to a farm and you're not paying attention to things like that, you'll get into what I did. Was it the guy's fault? I, I legitimately saw, I legitimately bought the sheep and I have no complaints. I just was uneducated. So when I got home and we started having babies, those were not sheep from his farm. Those were sheep from a stockyard. And that stockyard probably, God knows what was mixed up in that and bought it at a reduced price and then we got back and I bought them. So always go to a farm when you're buying sheep um, and look at the ear tags, okay? Maybe there's one or two, I get that. Maybe someone bought a sheep five years ago and it has a Missouri tag and it's a good, you know, good sheep and they've had it on the farm and it's one of their core breeding ewes. That's great, but if you've got a large amount of different colored tags, and I mean, they might not even be colored. You know, I've got some Mary, uh, Mary over here. She has a metal ear tag that I bought years back. Okay, and 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 so we've got that. And then you know, you could have red, and and as I said, yellow, and all the ones. So if that's what you want to just kind of look around when you're looking at your sheep and saying, "Wow, I'm buying from a mini stockyard. This is not a farm that is breeding the best of the best, and they're selling." There is a very good possibility that you are not buying the best in quality sheep. Not in all cases. I was fortunate. The guy that I bought mine from, super nice guy, very educated, um, and that, and and he's an honest man. But there were a lot of sheep that he had that were not from there. So you might say to yourself, "How do I change that? How can I fix that dynamic to where I'm not going to run into that problem?" You know, here's the biggest thing that you've got to understand. And after doing a lot of research, I'm a researcher. I understood this. I started going to stockyards. I started going and seeing individuals throughout the state. And here's what I realized. A very small percentage of breeders are going to sell the cream of the crop of their herd. They're going to want to keep those and they're going to want to continually breed those to produce a better uh, lamb down the road. So when you go to a stockyard, and you're buying a big stockyard and they're auctioning and you're doing all that. If you haven't been, I highly recommend it. I go to one over about uh, 40 minutes from here, sometimes just to get educated. And what I realized is this, you basically are getting the worst of someone else's stock. And I can even say that from some of the sheep that we have sold for just meat to people is they're not looking for a, a large pedigree of, of a really strong, they are looking for meat. So when these people are at the stockyard and they are selling 50, 60, 70, maybe 200 sheep from their spring lambing, they're only going to sell at a stockyard. They're only going to sell you know, the worst of the herd. So when you go to the stockyard and you see some really good looking sheep and you're like, hey, I'm going to bid on these. Listen to me carefully. You're getting the best of the worst. I'm going to say that again. You're getting the best of the worst because the worst herd or the worst of that group is being brought and being sold. 
you can take that and apply that to anything you've got. You're not going to get rid of the best of something that you have, no matter what it is. You're going to keep the best. You're going to get rid of what we call culling in the industry. You are going to cull out the bad. So when you go to the stockyard again, you are getting the worst of what that farmer has and you can pick the best, but it's still not the best. It's the best of the worst. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about real quick, okay? So take this as being uh, sheep farmers, okay? And here's your stockyard. And then here are other sheep farmers, okay? And over here is you. So the focus is this and the whole piece that I'm talking about. If you have someone who has a dorper and here's a Katahdin, and here's maybe a St. Croix, and maybe just a mixed group of sheep, okay? The worst group is gonna be cold, and they're gonna all be sent here, okay? And when they're at this stockyard, they're gonna be put in panels, and they're gonna intermix, and all of that's gonna happen, okay? So you might have a Katahdin mixed with a St. Croix, which may not be bad, but it is if you only want a St. Croix. And then you're gonna have this. These people here, are gonna come over and they are going to buy most of the time in bulk. So they're gonna buy a large amount of sheep at a reduced cost and that's gonna cost them this. When they get back to their farm, you're gonna go and visit them and they're gonna have the worst sheep of these that you got at the stockyard. They're the best sheep at the stockyard. They're the worst of the sheep in the other places that people have wanted to get rid of. They're gonna buy bulk and you're gonna get a sheep and you're gonna pay much more for this because you're not buying 300 head, you're only buying, let's say three. So you are going to get the worst sheep is gonna come here, breed with the worst sheep. This guy is going to get the best sheep of the worst sheep and then you're gonna pay a premium price and it's gonna to come to you. And what's gonna end up happening is in five months, this guy that sold you the sheep and tells you they're pregnant, it is going to be one of the bad sheep from here. So you've got the, again, you've got the best of the worst. And then when you have the baby down here, it might be a sheep that you don't want and you're starting all over again. So what I recommend to you all is go directly to this person, or this person, or this person, or this person. Look at the ear tags, make sure they come from there, and tell them you don't want the bad sheep. Pay the price and get the quality sheep that they want to keep. Offer them more money for what they have so you can have the prime sheep. They will sell them if you offer them the money. I hope the video has been helpful. As always, I try and take the errors that I've had and apply them to where someone out there can use them properly. So keep in mind, you are responsible for finding the sheep and knowing. The seller is not responsible for telling you anything other than uh, they're for sale, okay? Always do your research and know what to do. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Give me a thumbs up and have a great week.